Well, what we're looking at right now is the result of some late night obsolete camcorder shopping. This is the disassembled CCD TRV 608 Hi8 Sony Handycam that I just purchased about two weeks ago that was listed as being in partially working condition. The person had mentioned that it was able to playback and record videos. However, there was nothing displayed on the screen when in camera mode, which is a black screen. Now, I actually happened to just recently purchase another Handycam, something I probably shouldn't keep doing because I need more of these like I do a hole in the head. I bought this Sony DCR TRV140. This is a Digital 8 model Handycam. This was listed in very poor cosmetic condition, non-functional, uh, mechanical condition, didn't work. That's what they told me. Well, when I got it, the thing is in impeccable condition. I mean, even the hand strap hasn't begun to deteriorate and disintegrate. No scratches, no scuffs. The thing is practically brand new. And the only problem was that the, the lens mechanism, actually the iris or the aperture, I believe is what it's called, um, has these little blades that open and close depending on the amount of light it needs to let in. And what happens is lubricant from the lens mechanism, the zoom motor, I'm assuming, ends up leaking and making its way onto those blades and acting as a glue of sorts. Now, I can't claim to be the expert that uh, discovered this. That goes to YouTube user 12 Volt Vids because without his videos on this and similar issues with these older vintage handicams, I would have been up a certain creek without a paddle. I happened to query the problem that that camera was suffering from, and his video was one, uh, probably like the first one that popped up. And uh, within probably 20 minutes after watching that video, I was able to get this camera back up and running and working fine. And then what did I do? Because I was feeling lucky, I bought yet another model. <laughs> this time the Hi8 counterpart with, with the uh, much bigger LCD display. This one is the appropriate size, I think, for a recording video and should have been shared on all the models, even the Digital 8 model, because you can see how much smaller this one is, and that thing is just, it's paltry. It's ridiculously small. So this uh, Handycam has uh, two problems with it, the first of which being that the lens uh, aperture, which is located right in here on this slide-out tray, is suffering from the same exact issue that this one was suffering from. There is lubricant on those the aperture blades, and it's keeping them from opening all the way. And I was actually able to get it working without even tearing into this by, before disassembling this, just taking this pair of metal scissors and tapping on the outside, right about here. And I kept doing that, and I kept seeing the image get a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, more of a picture, and then eventually did one decent click without, of course, doing any damage, and was able to return the picture back to its normal working uh, condition. Everything looks A-OK. -okay. Of course, I'm going to go further now and actually remove this, which isn't that big of a deal, but I want to address my primary concern, and that was with the tape mechanism, because the tape mechanism, uh, when I received it, totally not working, uh, wasn't playing back any video, high 8 or 8 millimeter. It was just a blue screen, like uh, the heads were needing alignment or something like that. You did get audio, but there's a bit of static, and it just sounded like something was out of alignment. So to be able to tear into this thing, I did have to remove all the screws that Sony so cleverly decided to designate to the common layperson by way of these embossed little arrows next to all the screws. That tells you what screws you have to remove to take it apart, because there's quite a few, like on the back section, where the battery goes that you're not supposed to remove and if you didn't know any better you'd end up removing all those screws and causing bigger problems for yourself so I had to remove the uh, begin by removing the screws of course and then this lens shroud which has a sig single ribbon cable which is what supplies uh, connectivity for the microphone the tally lamp the night shot infrared uh, emitter behind this black piece of smoke plastic and then the halogen spotlight also needed to remove the wrist strap. Uh, there were a couple of screws that were holding this on pl in place. 
had to remove that. Also the two screws that hold the cassette compartment door. And then I was able to work on separating this as a sort of clamshell because as it would normally sit, this would go right about here. And then this would be sandwiched in between, kind of like a ham and cheese sandwich with this being the ham and cheese and these two pieces being the buns. So, uh, very carefully put this thing on and I actually have a tape in here. I was a bit concerned about uh, it possibly getting mangled and destroyed beyond repair. But it's just some B-roll quality 8mm uh, video when I used an old 8mm camcorder as a very crude security camera. Uh, so it's nothing that uh, I, I would cry about if it get, was lost to the ether. And you can see that the tape is in the air. And what I ended up needing to do also is remove this metal shroud. There's a total of two shiny metal screws that hold this thing in place. And once you remove that, I'm still getting used to using this iPhone to record video here, so I apologize if things aren't exactly framed correctly. I had to remove that metal piece and then was able to gain access to the drum and uh, was able to use the back of my fingernail as 12 volt vids so cleverly discovered and just rub it, not even rub it, just rest it against the head drum as the thing is spinning playing back a tape. I wouldn't have to have torn into it this far to get to this stage had it been a newer model where the tape drum is actually located at the top like this style Handycam and in his video of that problem he actually has a few of them almost all of them have the drum located up here so all he has to do very similar design is just remove the screws that hold his access panel and then he was able to just place his finger on there clean up the drum uh, remove those metal particles that build up on the drum and clog it up and prevent the video from being read correctly and then put it back together so i couldn't get away that easily of course because it's located on the bottom it's one of the older style mechanisms but that's all that was necessary to get the video to play back properly because again all i was getting was a blue screen but when i would try to pl uh, fast forward or rewind video i would get pix pixelation distorted video and black banding over the video so you actually see something when you fast forward or rewind but not when you were playing so just took my hand my fingernail very carefully right in that area right there where this uh, little cleaning sponge wheel thing touches the drum every now and again and just went like that rested it on it for a second and it, the picture came back to life I was absolutely amazed that such a simple fix would get this thing operational again because you'd believe that you know, you need special cleaning cassettes, and it's a very complicated endeavor to clean the head drums. Uh, you need these special chemicals, and all I had to end up using was the back of my fingernail, which, as he proved, uh, which, as he pointed out, is softer than this metal drum, but is enough to remove the metal particles that flake off. If I don't manage to drop and break this thing after I've now fixed it, uh, you're able to clean those metal particles that flake off and clog up the head and prevent the video from being read properly. That seems to be fixed now. I am going to possibly use some cotton swabs and some isopropyl alcohol just to clean this section that uh, looks like it's recording the audio, uh, or rather is for, for the actual the audio playback. It looks a little worse for the wear in sections, a little dirty, but nothing that's some cotton swabs and some elbow grease can't fix and then coming over here uh what am i saying coming over here that's the battery compartment <laughs> uh, coming over here now what i need to do is very carefully i really don't want to break things here i really need one of those fancy rubber mats that uh, people that take apart phones and fix them for a living use and i've got screws sitting on my desk now that are just waiting to go flying off into the nether regions of my office and I also disconnected and removed, uh, disconnected and reconnected these, uh, I believe they're called edge connectors, uh, as that can cause intermittent operation, erratic operation. And uh, again, that's, I didn't discover that. I'm not claiming to be the uh, Sony Handycam wizard. That title definitely goes to YouTube user 12 volt vids. So now the lens was working but what I think I'm going to do 
just to rule this out hap from happening in the future and then having to take this thing apart again because the more you have to take these things apart and then reassemble them, the more chance there is of uh, screwing up these cables or just something going upside down. And I'm going to remove this, mecha this uh, lens mechanism. There's two screws here. There's two screws here, one here, one here. And then there is a third one right there. And then this lens lifts off. I think there's uh, yeah, two ribbon cables. One there, one there. And then once I get that out, I am going to pull out this uh, the aperture or the iris and uh, see what lays in store for me. All right, a couple more pieces removed and a lot of screws to keep track of. All right, now I'm not seeing anything at first on this side, but it's always this side usually that's very easy to see. And uh, I'm not seeing anything. It actually looks clean. The one on the uh, TRV-140 was a lot worse. I'm not even seeing anything. Well, upon closer examination, it actually seems like there are trace amounts of that problematic oil and lubricant on the blades. The first one looked fine, looked totally clean. But now that I've removed it, I've actually notice that there's a small strip on this lower section and I don't know if the camera is going to cooperate here or if we can even focus that closely but you see that bottom section that looks wet well that must be uh, what was causing the problem because when I was using my finger to try to open this and normally it should have like a spring-like action and return back to the close position wasn't doing that with the other one still in place so needless to say i think that little bit of lubrication is the problem and something that i just noticed as i was reassembling this look at all that oil that's right in that center section where that little nub is by the lens mechanism would you look at that looks a lot cleaner to me well we've since gotten it reassembled only to discover that there is no video so this is interesting enough to take this thing apart again all right and here we are I was able to successfully uh, execute the repair on this handy cam and bring it back into the land of the living I don't know what was causing the issue with the screen being black and not showing anything after I reassembled this because I took it apart and I didn't disconnect anything per se. I just sort of wiggled some connectors and now the video has, or the lens has started working once more. So I'm wondering if maybe one of the ribbon cables just needed a bit of jostling around. But I did confirm that everything was securely connected. Uh, the wires were seated properly in their respective connectors. The latches were locked on the connectors that had those sorts of latches. Now we're getting a nice clear picture. And uh, the tape playback works just fine. No more distortion or other problems. If I just go to play this for a second. The most well-loved and well-known. An unpublished video of mine that I did on a Canon AE-1. So that's not one, but two handicams that have been brought back from the brink of death and being sent off to the electronics recyclers, or even worse, the garbage. And I'm looking forward to using this thing going forward. And let me tell you, it really is a treat using a camcorder with a screen this large compared to all the other ones, all the other old handicams I have where a screen is about half the size of this. It just makes things so much more pleasant using it to record video and uh, playback tapes. So I am immensely thankful, needless to say. And again, a big shout out to YouTube user 12 Volt Vids because without his videos, I definitely would have been stumped on this, unable to figure out what the problem was or even how to fix this or if it was even fixable. Now I have not one, but two working Sony Handycams repaired by me for absolutely nothing.